Hello, how are you, Amanda? Say an artist. We're gonna do our makeup. I'm gonna do my face first today because I have a very, very specific tutorial for my eyes that I wanna do. I've been doing my eye makeup different. I've been doing this for a while just to play with it, figure out how I like it and kind of master it. I love doing first impressions, but for something like this, I kind of just, I wanted to play with it. So I did. And I really like the way it's changed the shape of my eye. I really love the eye shape. And we're gonna talk about it. That's in another tutorial though. So we're gonna do our face first. But I just found out today, there is not a sale, but an item on sale. I don't talk about illuminators enough. And it's because I don't use them. I have oily skin and for my longevity, it's, it is what it is. Honey, apparently, it is National Honey Month or something. So honey is 10% off. We're gonna talk about how I would use it, how I am going to use it. I'm gonna do my color correcting and then we're gonna underpaint with honey. When I have my oily skin, now it's pretty extra oily, transitioning shades. I need to pin my hair because I'm doing this whole mid part thing. And you know, it's probably by the time I'm really into it and figure it out, it'll be on its way out. Wow. Take me back to the 90s. I need butterfly clips. I saw somebody with butterfly clips the other day. <laughs> okay, we're going to get into this. I'm going to use a shape brush and I'm going to go into my correctors, mainly well, all my correctors. Here's the deal. I'm oily and I've noticed that as I'm the most oily is when I need my correctors the most. My scarring will pull through. When I'm oily, makeup moves. That's just the nature of the beast. It's makeup, not magic. However, using Aspen and Suede, my two correctors, Aspen on my redness, Suede on my hyperpigmentation, when I use these two on my cheeks specifically, I have a lot of product that I put there with my blush and my bronzer and my contour and all, you know, my stuff, covering my stuff. If I let my freak flag fly with my oil, my makeup moves using something dense underneath helps helps this is with everything i love fall most of all <laughs> because i get to get into those tones that work really well with all of my stuff and giving me the coverage that i like i'm going to be using my favorite lip and cheek color rosewood today and i'm still using a bronzer contour combo for my contour because just as because i still have my summer color the cool is just pulling too cool for me. And so I use bronzer. Okay, now with Honey being on sale, I want to show how I would use it with my oily skin. If I use an illuminator, it is typically always a cream illuminator. I only use the powder ones as eyeshadows, honestly. But it's because they're just so punchy. I love the creams because they're subtle and nice. All right, let's get this last bit of correcting on. And then I'm going to show you. If I lay a cream illuminator or... Again, the illuminators are just too jazzy and punchy for my face as an everyday going on the town to shop, grocery shop. I'm going to the grocery store today. I don't need to look like I'm going to the disco. So I use cream illuminators, but again, oily. So what I do is I prep really well with a cream illuminator and I underpaint with it. So I'm just going to go into honey. It's really creamy. It's so pretty. And these go on more sheer. Look at how pretty that is. I mean, this is great for holidays. We've got holidays coming up and it's, it's a gold tone, which goes really well with fall with all the fall foliage. And we've got Thanksgiving. You've got costumes coming up. I mean, kids love a good shimmer. Suddenly they're fancy full face of makeup and it's just been shimmer. We're going to take honey. And I am going to put this in my high points, kind of where my bronzers go. I'm going to go right here. I'm going to go right here. I'm going to hit right here. And I'm, I'm going heavy hand on this, okay? I'm not being subtle with it whatsoever. I'm really laying it on, and it's going to mix with the colors I put on. Understand, when you put something cr as creamy as an illuminator on, it's going to mix with whatever you lay on top of it. That's just what it is. And whatever's left on my finger, I'm going to put right there. Another really great place. If you are in a place where it's still hot, pop it on your collarbone. If you have one that shows, I don't. Um, <laughs> but it will make it pop. But it's really, really pretty. Just, I put this on my brides. I don't, again, even on my brides, 
and I've done maybe a handful. Let's not, let's not act like I'm crazy and doing all kinds of brides, but they usually have their shoulders exposed. I love taking a color like honey because it just grabs those natural tones. I do pay attention to their natural tone before I grab a color, but honey, I put, I start on their shoulders and then I pull it down and it is just so lovely. I bring it across the chest. It just adds this little, it's not sparkly. It's not like a glitter. It's not going to take attention away. It's not going to draw attention to. It's a really great, cream illuminators are so good for just, I don't know, what is this called? A decollege? I don't know. Put it on your chest. It's great. It's not going to look wild. It's not going to look crazy. You're not going to, it's good. That's all I'm going to say. It's good. All right. Then I can go in. That's all I'm going to do with this. Honestly, that's all I'm going to use this for. And now I can go in and I can do my makeup. I'm going to use a blush and bronzer brush. I'm going to see if mango is my shade again today. Yesterday it was, but today it looks a little dark. This is what's nice. And so I, I always keep my three, as I'm transitioning to fall, I keep hazel, mango, and golden hour together because those have been my shades throughout the summer from spring into now. And so I'm going to tap into hazel and mango together and they are going to become, I always just keep these three together. It's, that's what's nice about a big palette. Okay. Right now I'm still using my vacation palette, which is a triple decker. So I've got my face, my cheeks, and my eyeshadows from vacation. And it's really simple. We went to Hawaii. So I didn't take a cream illuminator. I did take Georgia and it was a great eyeshadow. I didn't use it like this. <laughs> okay, just balancing my skin, going over my scarring. I'm stippling over my corrector like I always do. And I really haven't hit any of my illuminator yet because I keep kind of the mid of my chin alone because I'm gonna put a brightener there. Same for my Cupid's bow, but it's gonna mix really well with, I, I say really, really too much. And then I'm gonna bring this down. This little section of my neck is always crazy light. I get a tan to here, and then I get some color here, mainly here, but right here, nothing. And so I always make sure I'm bringing my main highlight down. I might tap a little more into the lighter color so it's a bit of a more natural transition. And then I just fluff it, pick up any excess because you know, it's a neck, it doesn't look like, it doesn't need to look like a full face of makeup on my neck. Okay, I've been mixing two colors together. I'm using, I'm gonna switch to Bella just because I already have Illuminator and I want you to really see the way, I think it's misleading if I use Xanadu. I've been loving it when it comes back at the end of the year permanently, snag that, snag that, where did I put all my bronzers? all of them right here. So I'm grabbing Bella and I'm going to put it in next to Indigo. Okay. They're pretty darn close. It's just that Bella's more warm and I've been using that as my contours because I've, it just looks super gray <laughs> when I put them on as a, when I put a contour on as a contour, it's just too gray for me. Okay. So I put this on, I'm putting it on over that, uh, honey illuminator. And it just gives a little bit of sheen. Oh, it's pretty. I would say it pair. It, it's very similar to using Xanadu. I know Xanadu is Bella and Glow. For my skin tone, I've always used Honey more than Glow because it just was too dark. But using so this is my favorite con little combo. And now it's on sale. All right, going in, bringing it around, pushing it up towards the hairline. I also took indigo with me because I'm a brunette, sort of. Um, I'm a brunette and I wear my halo when I want to feel pretty and fancy and it's a date or it's a thing. But my hair is really fine, especially over here on my, what are those, widow's peaks. I used indigo to fill in between my hair and hide my halo band. And it was really, it was really great. So think about that. If you have really dark hair, cola might be a good contour to use just to fill in if you need to. But it was kind of like, oh. <laughs> all right, going into my Bella and my Indigo again. And I'm going to go right above my natural shadow, going into my bronzer area and into my contour area together. It kind of simplifies the contour bronzer method if, if it's something that overwhelms you do them together and do a bronzer application. It's just, it's not, 
There's no rules. Find the way that when your makeup's on and you feel good, that's it. I'm just giving options. You can do this with traditional makeup too. Use me as a, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? There's a word and I'm gonna think of it. Technique, wow. <laughs> Take a technique and use it. I mean, I steal techniques from traditional makeup all the time. It's really just talking about different placements and methods. I like creams because I like the way it sits on my skin because my skin is different from day to day. All right, we're going to go in and I am going to use white peach to just tap right here. I'm going to tap it right here. I'm going over that honey color and I'm going to tap right here. And then I'm just pressing this out over the brows, building. I try to go very light on this one because it is quite bright, but I like a good bright. And my skin's in a decent place right now where I'm not needing more, as much coverage as much as I'm needing just balance and the finish of a good cream. I'm gonna punch things up a little for me here. But oh, it's so good with this honey. I like underpainting with honey. It's gonna give me the longevity and it's gonna mix with my cream. So it's one, if that makes sense. One, okay, I'm gonna tap into both my Bella and my Indigo, and I'm gonna draw my lines on my nose. This is gonna go and mix in with that honey. I overcorrect on my nose, and I do like to tap so it doesn't turn into like a smear, and you can just kind of, I don't know. Everybody has their way, okay? Tapping into both, squaring off the tip, but just, I have a bump and I really want to hide it. So I'm just going to do that. Then we're going to take, I'm going to use the detail brush and I'm going to tap this out. I find this to be the best brush for noses. I always recommend this and the blush and bronzer brush together. They're a dynamic duo. You could do so many things. This can be great for your under eyes too if you don't want to add the blend brush. But it's a good addition to your collection not to start okay i'm going to take that small end i'm going to go into white peach again we're going to go right down the middle over top of that honey and it's going to mix and we want it to and i'm tapping this in i just don't like when i what i find when i put on an illuminator over top of my makeup you can see exactly where you put it and it looks a little less natural and a little and a little bit more purposeful I can see the smear. I don't like to see the smears of colors. I like I like things to be cohesive. I like a good flow. That's what I like. Okay, we're gonna go in. I've pretty much gone over almost all of my, I'm just blending this all out. Blending out the brightening with whatever brush is in my hand. Look at how pretty that is. But do you see this pretty, ooh, do you see the way? That's still pretty exposed. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna go to Rosewood. It is my favorite color for fall and it pulls different on everybody. Some people it pulls more pink, some people it pulls more orange. If you have rosewood and have used it, I want you to tell me what it pulls. I find that it pulls more pink for me. Tell me in the comments, does it pull pink or orange for you? But I use a pink with it to tone it, to not warm it. I can go full Oompa Loompa real quick. I always focus my blush up here but I am also gonna use Madrid with it. It's a bit peachy with a little bit of pink because of my scarring. But I'm grabbing, that hairpin did not hold my hair up very well, but my hair is about a bazillion different lengths. I always keep my blush towards the top of my cheeks, but my scarring always pulls through when I do a blush. So I'm gonna grab Madrid to go over my cheeks to hide the scarring and to work with not sandstone. I keep saying sandstone. It's rosewood. <laughs> I promise. It's my favorite. I'm very dewy. Illuminators will do that to me. Illuminators do that to me. But before I move on, we're going to get in. We're going to do our brightening. And then I'm going to spray. And then I'm all set. We're using the blend brush small end. I'm going to smile. You see those shines? We're going to put it in the basket. The shine basket. The smile basket. The happy basket. We go up to the mid. And then we work our way out here and follow those orbital bones. If you have texture, if you're maturing or you are mature, put your brightening outside of your texture, outside of the texture, and then work it onto the texture. That way the smallest amount is on there, but it's still super pigmented and it will still give you the correction and the coverage 
and the brightness of this, this pin did not pin. There we go. I, I just, I like a good punchy brightening too. It's a matter of preference. If you're seeing a lot of texture under your eyes, you might need to tone down your brightening and pick a shade that's a bit darker. And that's where I come into, into play where you can ask me, say, hey, I'm using this shade. I'll ask for a picture. I'm not going to lie because I want to actually see what I'm working with. And you just send me a picture. It could just be of your eyes, whatever. And I can color match. I prefer your whole face. But if your brightening is pulling a lot of texture, it's because it's too light and you need a color that's just a little bit darker. And then maybe just pick a shade. So if you're mango, maybe do Athens. If you're hazel, you could also do Athens. It's a good brightening that's a little bit more subtle. And then you could just spotlight and add that brightening that's causing the texture to just go right there, right there, and let the rest do the work. Okay, we're gonna set. I've been using the poor, the poor Professionals Super Setter. This is by Benefit. I love the spray. I don't like the sprayer. It's just, you really gotta work at it. I don't like to work that hard. That's why I play with makeup. Doesn't feel like work. Okay, we're gonna grab some setting. I have a twitch under my eye, stress. Vanilla dust. And I always start on the outside and work my way in. Just because you're using a powder does not mean it's gonna take away that dewy finish. And don't forget we underpainted with that honey illuminator. And it's just, it's so pretty. It's so, so pretty. And I'm gonna do my eyes on a different tutorial but you still get that pretty little sheen that has a more natural skin-like finish because we underpainted and if you are oily, it works. It works really nice. And then I am gonna put it in one more. Sh Ugh. If you don't like to do a bunch of eye makeup, which is fine, it's not for everyone, and it goes so darn dark. <laughs> okay, might have overdone that one. It happens, it happens to the best of us. Just gonna tone it down with that brightening, blend it out so you don't look like you ate a donut, but it can just go in there. Pretty, 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 pretty. Okay, we're gonna line our lips. I'm gonna use sandstone again because I love it. Rosewood. Rosewood, I promise. Rosewood to line, and I use the big end of the multitasker brush. I think you get a little more control, and I like my lip liner to be on the thicker side. And I can use this to blend out a little. I like to buff out the edges. I don't like a hard, hard line. Nice. Okay, so Rosewood. Before this, I was talking about sandstone is why. That's my problem. I'm going to take that Madrid that I put on my lips, and we're going to fill in. Let them work. Okay, that's a, such a pretty fall color. There we go. Okay. That's so pretty. I love fall, most of all. Take these out. I feel like the cowardly lion. I still am not sure about this middle part, but yesterday it just felt flat. I'm gonna go add some wow to it. Have you guys tried wow? It's, um, here comes another word that I can't think of. Not adrenaline, steroids. It's, it's a steroid spray. <laughs> it's steroids for your hair. So you don't get angry and hostile. You just get big and voluptuous on your hair. Okay, if I could spray it on my butt and make my butt a little more voluptuous, that'd be nice, but I just have a really long thigh. Okay, that's my face. That is using honey, and it just creates this really pretty, subtle underglow. Look at my nose. I just, it's not like, I'm not like the reverse Rudolph. It's not that. It's just, I like when things cohesively can just blend together. You could even take honey, which is somewhere. Take honey, and you could even just pop that up here on your brow bone. Put a little mascara on, or maybe you wear eyelash extensions. And just pop that up there and it's just gorgeous pretty we could pop some on our lipstick give it a little Ooh, 
I like that. Trying to not flip you off. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, honey, 10% off. Go get it. Have, I'm gonna post a picture of like all of this all done together. And I'm gonna kind of stick with the browns and the golds and the oranges and just fall it up. Cause I'm falling for fall. Okay, I need to stop touching this hair. Have a good day.